I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Ford Bronco Sport Badlands without launch control brake boost. Pretty good for something in this class. Really not bad. Horsepower and torque. 250 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque from a two-liter turbo four-cylinder. Oh, I should have said Bronco power instead of horsepower. Oh, damn it. A bron that. Bronco's a horse. Let's do it again. Bronco power and Bronco torque. <laughs> okay. I think we're over that. Okay, let's just get this right off the bat. This is not the full-size Bronco. This is not a real Bronco. It is a Bronco Sport. However, currently at this time, the time that we are driving it, this commands so much attention on the road, everybody stares at this thing and everybody thinks it's the Bronco. Yeah, a lot of people don't really know the difference and that's fine because the people who like it, like it and they're gonna buy it, so good for Ford. Again, Ford has kind of killed it in the marketing department by making this as well as the Mustang Mach-E because the Mustang name, the Bronco name, they know what they're doing to yeah, get attention. They're doing a good job of using the same names across completely different models. It's like if Toyota did the RAV4 and then the 4Runner was the RAV4 Pro. Yes, pretty much. All right, cliche corner. Okay, let's see what happens. Send it! Oh, definitely lots of body roll, lots of understeer. This is all wheel drive. It is a heavily front bias system. This is a different system than the rest of the Broncos because this is the Badlands. We do have clutch packs on the rear diff so you can change kind of how the power varies around. Is that with your GOAT modes? Yes, Yuri. They are a go anywhere terrain or whatever it's called. Go over any terrain. That's what they're called. Because like GOAT is supposed to mean greatest of all time. Yes. Good, good, good marketing yeah. there for Exactly. Well, let's just get into those drive modes. We have a lot of them. Starting with slippery, sport, eco, normal, mud ruts, sand, and we also have rock crawl, those two additional modes you get on the Badlands. Okay, the animations are pretty sweet, but like sometimes there's a little bit of lag in that system. And just getting to all the modes, it's just, yeah. Yeah, and then like if you have your traction off and you change the mode, there's so many screens overlapping warnings, it's like, ah! And there's definitely pumped in audio, especially in sport mode, so I'm just gonna floor it. Okay, and then I'm going to put it back into normal mode. I'll put an eco even better. Yeah. But see, they changed it so the modes don't vary as quickly as they did yeah. in the Edge ST. It's so there's a, no like. It's not a hard crossover. So I think they probably watched our last video where we complained about that kind of stuff well, and then came up with an alternate solution. And so driving this Bronco, it actually feels really nice on the road. The suspension is really soft. It would probably do pretty well off road. We don't have the opportunity to drive it off road just because we haven't had too much time with it. But I mean, on the road where I realistically, most people are gonna be driving this thing. This is not the full size real Bronco. It feels great. The yeah. steering is really light. Yeah, it's just like a normal SUV that looks cool, more ruggedy, and also looks like a Honda Element and a Defender and has a lot of things in common with the Honda Element. Like what? Like these floors. Oh yeah. Plasticky floors. It looks like a boxy SUV. Same kind of like headlights at the, the front. Did the Bronco come first or the Element? Are you talking about the Bronco? The Bronco, the Element came before the Bronco Sport, and we're in a Bronco Sport. Oh, okay, okay. Just, just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just yeah the, got the, you, yeah, yeah. got you. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you tried. <laughs> <laughs> let me know if that's a win or an L for Yuri down in the comments below. Yes, let, let me know how much he lost by it. And power-wise, this basically destroys everything in this class, like a CRV, a Rav4, a Rav4 Trail, or whatever those called TRD Pro, whatever it's TRD. What's it called? TRD Off-Road, that's what it's called. Yeah, this basically destroys everything in this class because this is the top trim of this car. And we know it's the top trim of the car because we have a fridge magnet on the door. Yeah, those fridge magnets are brutal. Like, I don't know why that was their solution to the badge. Yeah, don't absolutely hate it, but I do like that it's a nice bright color. And that badge also kind of matches a baby on board sticker, which most people will probably have if they buy one of these things or baby en route. It is a Badlands and the Badlands does get different suspension. We also, like I said, have that different all wheel drive system. So it's like actual real torque vectoring. I don't know how that's gonna be for like long-term reliability because it's kind of similar to the Focus RS system. Okay, yo, doesn't uh, the Badlands have like a tiny bit more ride height than the other trims of the Sport? Yes, it has a little bit more. I think it's like approximately an inch. We also have tow hooks in the front. We also have a little bit of skid plates underneath. So this so is almost kind of exactly like that little Jeep uh, Trailhawk. 
Yes, the uh, compass or the renegade or the trailhawk. Well, it's bigger, bigger than, than the renegade. renegade. This yeah. is like a compass. This is like a Cherokee or a compass trailhawk. I feel like Cherokee is a little bigger. So with the actual driving stuff out of the way, let's talk about the looks. Yeah, it looks like a little Bronco. Yeah, a little version of the cool Bronco that's coming out, which is fine because not everyone is hardcore and not everybody needs that. Yeah, exactly. Like you'll see these in malls everywhere, and it'll be great. So this looks better than its competitor because its competitor is kind of based off the Jeep Wrangler, whereas this one's based off the Bronco. So I think this is a better comparable version that's like the more on-roady version. When the first little Jeep imitation ones came out to be like the Wrangler, I think people were stoked on it then, just like people are stoked on the Bronco Sport. But those had the like Bronco the, now. Those had like the weird headlights and stuff like that, like nobody was ever really stoked on and like the weird grills. Yeah, where... well the headlight game has improved like so much since then. That but, was like 15 let, years ago. Let's talk about these headlights because they look awesome. They look awesome, but they don't go full brightness unless you're driving, which I guess is kind of cool, but it'd be nice if we didn't have to duck down with the car and drive while filming the front end to make yeah, the lights bright. Yeah, because if you have it in park, the headlights actually fully turn off, and then if you have it in this weird little, you know, parking light mode, then they're actually half brightness. It's, it's really weird. I don't know why companies do that kind of stuff. Did the words Bronco light up? Uh, no, not in this one. Okay. It looked like they kind of almost do, but maybe that's everything else. I think it's just because it's so bright. It's like yeah, light. yeah. Yeah, it's nice having the little white Bronco thing at the front. And the grill looks cool as well. Yeah. Then if we move on to the side, we've got nice, I guess, straight, strong body lines. Yeah, it definitely looks pretty cool from the side. The one thing that I noticed is there's a little bit of an uptick in the roof, which adds headroom in the back, but they made it less awkward looking because they added a straight roof rack across the top. Oh, so it looked like a disco or a defender or whatever the exactly. thing is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it looks pretty cool. And then we've got like a kind of like a weird line for the back window. It's it all kind of blends in together, but it is nice. And then uh, the wheels. The wheels are actually pretty nice for this kind of car. I do like the Bronco center caps a lot. And what would be the Continental recommended tire for a Bronco Sport? The Cross Contact LX25. Okay, back end taillights don't really do it for me, but I'm not offended by them one bit. Yeah, it's nice that they're LED. There's something to them. It's not just kind of like a blah. <laughs> yeah, and then we can pop open the hatch. It's not power. And then we can also pop open the glass, which is very cool. And this is a, one of the easiest SUVs to figure out which one does what. Like, thank you, finally, yeah. for labeling it so clearly. And we don't really have any exhaust tips, and that's for extra ground clearance, but let's take a listen to the outside anyways. You can kind of see the little tips popping out there. It's like, it's nice. Yeah. It's not a, there's a lot of fake stuff that this isn't doing, so that that's cool. Right, and the overall boxy shape, like, this thing looks good. Yeah, it definitely looks good, and um, I think Ford killed it with the marketing for the Bronco Sport and the Bronco Pro or whatever. It's or is it Bronco? It's just Bronco. Bronco. Yeah, yeah. it's you, not like an Apple thing. Do you like the Bronco more than you like the Bronco prototype that The Rock was driving in that Rampage movie? Uh, I don't even remember that, but I guess we're gonna flash that cut on the to screen. the clip. Uh, cut to the photo so that we don't get demonetized. Cut to the photo. <laughs> All right, I guess is it my time to drive? Yes, it is. Everything off. Manual shifting. Are you ready? I'm ready, man. Oh. Okay, good, good power, dad fast, as we like to describe it. Yes, and even though Yuri had it in the M manual mode, it's still automatically upshifted, it which, is, I mean, makes sense. This is just a cool looking normal SUV with really good branding. Exactly. And some off-road capability that we are not able to explore. Maybe I will. If I did, it's in the video right now. I would like to get into the stuff that I hate about this car that super bugged me. Okay. Okay, first, you might have heard that sound of our bags sliding in the back. So this has plastic floors like an element. Super rugged. Easy to clean, all that crap. But this didn't come with any rubber surfaces to put down on top of it. So when I got my element, the first thing I did after buying groceries and having them slide everywhere was go to the Home Depot and get those like floor padding things that like everything can sit on. So yeah. you need those if you get this car. 100%, it's very frustrating to hear stuff flying around back there. Yeah, it, like stuff literally breaks and get, gains so much speed going left and right. Yes, <laughs> here's a clip of us driving through Cliche Corner with all our bags flying around. Box test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Our new box test member brake check shows box 10. We couldn't fit these boxes in today, but 11, 12, and 13 boxes. That's a lot for this Bronco Sport. Next thing, uh, tuning knob. <laughs> okay. When you're in the satellite radio mode and you're turning the tuning knob, the amount of lag, it's almost criminal that they sold you a car that has that much lag. It's definitely unacceptable. However, I have come up with a solution by accident. So if you go to your home screen, there's a small version of this. And if you rip through that, 
it actually goes very quickly. So it doesn't have the animation, but it goes through quickly, which is all I've ever wanted. Yeah, I mean, they could just get rid of the animation and I'll be happy in the main screen. Anyways, but then you said going to the home screen. So say I'm in Apple CarPlay. There is no hard button to get to your home screen. You literally need to click the home button on CarPlay and then click the Ford logo. Yes, no, it's definitely ridiculous. We've been kind of obsessing with the home button toggling stuff. This doesn't even give you a home button at all. It's really embarrassing that cars coming out in 2021 don't have these kind of things dialed. And especially because this is a Bronco or Bronco Sport, it's kind of trying to be rugged and whatever. And we do have hard buttons for all the climate, including the heated seats and heated steering wheel, which Ford used to bury the heated steering wheel button into the infotainment. So they took that out, but then they took away the home button. Yeah, okay, my solution for Ford is get rid of this turning off the screen button and start making that a home button for all future models. Yeah. And it would be perfect. But it is nice to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and reverse cameras are actually pretty good. And we reverse even have, and forward. Exactly, we have a Ford button and you complain about this lack of button in most cars, we've got one. I really, really do like that a lot. Great job, Ford. I guess that's really all my only, well, no, I have one more complaint, but this one's super minor. In the gauge cluster, I just want my speed in the middle, but I can't, it's gotta be at the bottom right. And then I have to pick something from the top menu. Like, I guess I have to see my tire pressure, my distribution, like I don't care, I just want, a big speedo. Yeah, I like having that intelligent all-wheel drive because I can see how front-wheel drive this is. Okay, does anybody who's watching this video leave a comment below? Do you put your wheel distribution thing there and watch that while driving? Because I've put that there and like I never notice it while I'm driving. I know you do, you care about that, but like I don't think, I feel like you're one in a million. Probably. We have over a million subscribers, so there's at least two of you. <laughs> uh, whoever you are, leave a comment. Uh, we can hang out sometime <laughs> post-COVID. Yeah, just like watch wheel distribution <laughs> yeah. of power. We can have a virtual Zoom call. So I know you did say one last complaint. However, you actually forgot about one more complaint that you had. It's the wireless charger. Okay, so right now my phone is plugged in and it fits there just fine, plugged in, and it, nothing bad's happening. But if you're not using CarPlay for some reason or you have someone else's phone there, it moves, you get a notification saying the wireless charger is not charging. It is charging, it's not charging, it's charging. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Don't tell me this. Make the little icon have a lightning bolt or not, but don't give me a notification, it doesn't matter. So I actually even had that problem while I was parked and I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max and it does fit in there which is great, but there's no room for it to move and that even causes that same problem to still happen. So I don't know what's going on there. Those are those are our only complaints with this car. Yeah, because otherwise this is fantastic. Let's talk about this interior. Yeah, it's um, just kind of normal. Yeah, it's really nice. Like the materials are also really nice. There are some hard plastics, but it's kind of expected because this is a rugged SUV. I like this bronze color. Yeah, it's trim. really cool. It's really and nice. the seats as well. Yeah, the seats are very comfortable, especially against your back. I feel like when you accelerate, the seat back takes the first little bit of like absorption there. <laughs> And the butt part is also very soft. The bolsters are like pretty minimal, but very comfortable overall. And we've got the little Bronco logo, very comfortable seats. Okay, yeah, the, the look of the seats. Yes. Very, very good, nice color of brown. One thing I don't like is that my elbows touching that armrest while driving, it's almost like a little too much of a stretch. I would like a little bit tighter armrests. No issue for me at six foot one and a half. And speaking of myself behind myself, I actually kind of fit but there's not really any knee room, tons of headroom. Yeah, and then if you put some stuff in your little compartment where your knees would be in the back seat, which is cool, you would have even less room. But if you're normal height, five foot eight, totally race, fine. race car height, yeah, no issues at all. And a secret compartment back there. So right behind us, on, only on the passenger side, there's actually a little compartment right there. So you can hide your uh, wet gloves and forget about them and get a musty smell in a couple months. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, let us know in the comments below if you've done that with your car with the sneaky thing. Oh, hey, speaking of secret compartments, you know we did the CT4V video? Yes. My buddy had an older one and he misses the fact that there's no secret Cadillac compartment anymore. Ah, uh, We don't have any more secret compartments here, but we do have a little compartment for your cell phone, which is also kind of convenient. Which probably won't trigger the wireless charger. Well, worry. yeah, that would actually be a cool wireless charger up there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> when, they, when, they, when they introduce wireless CarPlay, because yeah. until then, there's really no point. Before we get to our usual tests, Yuri, can you floor this eight-speed auto for me in normal mode? That's good pickup. Yeah. And it shifts pretty well. The transmission overall is pretty smooth. Using the paddles, kind of pointless. The paddles are tiny. Yeah. Okay, have you noticed in the comments, whenever we floor it like this, Oh, people can lose their... They're like, why are you for you like that? That's not how a car is supposed to work. And be like, yo, we're pushing it to 100 right away and I'm making a big noise so you can hear when I do it. Because look, yeah. did you hear that I just floored it? No. So, yo. And it's the same amount of pressure. Like, Yeah, like, okay, look. Here, this is me flooring it to 100. Did you hear that? No. But if I do this, you know from the moment I hit the button. So don't yell at me for that. Come on, guys. Come stop on, the guys. yelling. We're trying our best. Okay, usual test. Visors. Oh, these are for sure going to pass. Three, two, one. Yes. Yeah. Good job. 
And uh, the cup holder test, I got a cup of coffee from my Woman Crush Wednesday, Cora. Fits perfect. Yes, it does. You ever tried to do two cores full breakfast in one sitting? No, that's I, crazy. I try. I got defeated. Yeah, but I got like I got close. Yeah. Well, speaking of this lower section down here, we do have a GT500 inspired and Ford GT inspired shifter. I don't mind it. <laughs> and then we also have our goat modes down here. We also have our four wheel drive lock. We also have our rear diff lock and our off road and our hill descent. Yuri, send this into cliche corner for me. How's that understeer? A lot of understeer, <laughs> and I got my traction on, and it's clicking at me like crazy. Yeah, because you're in normal mode on with traction on. Yeah, I mean, what I would expect from a front-wheel drive, biased all-wheel drive system SUV that's not sporty. Yeah. Like an RDX would destroy this thing through there. Yes, for sure. But I did not feel at any point super sketched out or anything. Right. And if you wanted to tow some stuff, you could tow two jet skis through Cliche Corner at 2,200 pounds. How is the adaptive cruise and lane keep assist? Adaptive cruise and lane keep is very good. It keeps you in your lanes. It's like, we really like the one in the Edge ST and all the Lincolns, the same system. It's really good. But the buttons on the steering wheel, the layouts are kind of confusing. It's just like weird shapes and stuff. But I like seeing that Bronco on the steering wheel. Yeah, Bronco. If that just said Ford, I'd be like, oh, okay. Ford. Ford should just change their uh, name and company to Horse. <laughs> <laughs> Horse cars. Well, there's the Raptor though. And if you're just using this for a fun car and you like sound systems, we've got a nice one in here. Yeah, it's pretty decent. It's it's definitely better than most sound systems. And if you're using this car and a bunch of its little things that it has because it's a Bronco, there's actually a sort of tray table thing in the back. Yeah, which sits on the bumper. Yes, so you gotta like pull out the legs and then stretch it out and then move it into position. It's it's a cool system. I don't know if I'd it's, use it's it. It's not as cool as those old CRVs that had the full folding out exactly. uh, tire cover. That's right, yeah. yeah. And speaking of little weird things that this also has, if you look in the rear view mirror as the driver, you can see this little uh, I guess real full-size Bronco, but it's like a miniature version kind of. An, like, an old school one. Yeah, like that's what Jeep does. So I think Ford's kind of taking notes here and there. Yeah, I mean, they kind of have to like bite some stuff Jeep does. It's like the same territory. Yeah. So that's pretty much it with the new Ford Bronco. And we shall probably get to the price. This Badlands is $45,549. Canadian. I think that's actually a pretty good price. Pretty much in line with like a RAV4 TRD off-road and like a Jeep Trailhawk and it's, stuff. Especially if you need an SUV in 20 2021 this is like one of the coolest new things and the fact that there's even like a, a real bronco and this one isn't not cool yeah it's kind of like a no-brainer pretty much because it's like it's an actual suv that looks like an suv that has some capabilities i like it the, the only thing is if you get a jeep that's uh, a rubicon edition you know it can do the rubicon trails and i don't know if this has that kind of like certification or you know when you look at it you know it can do like i don't really know the capability of this but i know that can do that trail yeah well we've got fridge magnets on this one so like is there a badlands trail that it did like you know what i mean well actually badlands i think is a place in somewhere in the states that this is named after there's like a whole bunch of bad we got like, badlands up up in caledon yeah exactly so i mean this could probably drive over that even though you're not supposed to <laughs> okay so would you take this my 2007 honda oh i'm just kidding uh, or a comparable Jeep or I, a RAV4 trail. I would actually take this. I think this is my favorite in this class of SUVs. It's definitely not a full-size Bronco, so I'm not going to compare it to anything like that. But in those types of SUVs and like the regular CRVs and stuff, I like this a lot. And oh. I would take, I would definitely take this. I like this more than the Toyota. Don't know anything about the Jeep version because we haven't actually driven any of those. I'm just going based off looks for those because we haven't driven it. Like, I think overall... It's kind of this one. They did a great Ex job. Except I'd want it in orange. I keep thinking that color's like yellow. No, it's like definitely got more orange in it than yellow. I guess. Well, I've I got feel, three orange like cars that look orange. <laughs> I feel like you're bad. Oh, sorry. I only have two orange cars at the time that this video releases. I feel like you're bad at judging yellows. The hues. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, that was an orange yellow Brock. No, it's orange. It's like this M4 is... Uh, is yellow it's actually green well it's called yellow yeah but it is green the paint color i agree with you yeah anyway so let us know what you guys think this isn't the m4 that we're staring at but don't worry about it and leave a comment below yeah just leave comments subscribe if you want we haven't asked in a while yeah i mean this is the end of the video so you probably already subscribed if you're here